On the Pro Tour, we see a wide range of height and body types, but does being bigger and stronger actually make you a better disc golfer? Three, two, one. Hello and welcome to this episode of HeiserCast Disc Golf Podcast. Before we get started, I have a quick announcement to uh, tell all of you. We are really close to 500 subscribers. Thank you all for your support, but we want to show our appreciation by giving away this disc. I'm not going to show you the actual stamp of the disc because it's going to be a surprise we got to get a little bit closer to the 500 subscriber mark but it's a p model s s it's bottom stamped with kale visca 2021 um and as we get closer i'll show you the other side of the disc and let me tell you it is worth the wait so click that subscribe button but for now we are going to get into this episode talking about uh heightened and body build of pro disc golfers so i'm dave oster and we're here with joanna and lou how's it going you two hey dave doing good doing How are well you? everybody awesome we are good i'm good and we'll get right into it um so we're going to start with talking about kind of the backhand versus forehand type thing so we've seen a lot of different disc golf heights specifically right someone like calvin heimberg is much taller than an emerson keith but yet they both throw a very similar type distance um, so let's start with you, Joanna. How do you feel about both male or, or female players' um, height helping them be not just farther throwers, but better disc golfers? Yeah, I. Uh... <laughs> it's funny because I'm, I'm like, oh, yeah, of course, of course, height helps. Like, how can height not help? Like, you have longer limbs and you can coil them up and the whip is going to be much stronger than shorter limbs. And then I think of you know, prominent FPO players that are really not that tall and have like amazing distance. And you're like, well, hold on. Does that logic actually stay true? Like, is that right. sound? So um, I, like gut reaction is, yeah, I think height definitely helps height and strength. Um, I think the strength aspect goes into helping your stamina probably and staying present and not getting fatigued. Does it help with distance? I'm not really sure. Cause I, it is all about whip. Um, I think I gave you a non-answer just then because I kind of <laughs> like was is that thinking a, is about that a Lou it. answer. <laughs> I think I just lewd everyone. I'm sorry, but um, yeah. Uh-oh. because it kind of changed as you asked me and, and thought, oh my gosh, you're right. Like Paige Pierce is not that tall and like is such a distance thrower, or you know Jennifer Allen or Katrina Allen. Like those women aren't six five you know <laughs> like right. and yet they can hold distance titles so i'm not sure yeah well, so it's i think it's a very me still <laughs> yeah it's a very interesting topic which is why i want to ask you guys about it because like a, the example that i brought up an emerson keith versus a calvin heimberg neither of them are very muscular built you know they're not mm -hmm. very skinny especially like an eco mcmahon when you know a couple years ago he was very skinny but of still of course still throwing five, 600 feet. So Lou, what are your thoughts on being able to throw far or be good at disc golf, regardless of kind of your, your body height and, and strength? Right. So this, this has so many variables, guys. It's such an interesting topic. And uh, first and foremost, hello to the listeners and to all the viewers. I uh, hope everybody's throwings are down the fairways and missing all the trees. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think there's a lot here. First off, we're talking about our top elite athletes on the FPO and MPO side. And you nailed it on the head, Joanna. Everybody's built kind of different. So where does it really lie in terms of uh, benefiting or, you know, what is the perfect physique? So these players, you know, this is what they're doing. There's a, there's a, a shoe for every foot, basically. And you work with what you got. Paige, Paige Pierce, um, Katrina Allen can throw just as far as me. So I like to consider that I could throw as far as a girl. Yes, um, I'll say it proud and loud. And they use their tools better than I can use mine. They're masters of their craft and throwing the disc. So they understand where they can um, accelerate their shot the most. If it's their lengthy arms, if, you know, if it's their fast twitch firing hip muscles, it, you would like to think that someone who is much taller could possibly be the outright distance thrower. But then you talk about Dave Wiggins Jr. I've, I've 
I remember playing Bowling Green and mm. I was 25 years old and Dave Wiggins Jr. was, I believe, 16 years old and he crushed the field and he was already a distance record holder multiple times over and he's still our current and reigning distance record holder. And I'll tell <laughs> you what, Calvin got some height on him. You know what I mean? Uh, all, there's tons of big arms out there today that have height on someone like David Wiggins. So David Wiggins. So height is going to get you so far. You have to learn to use your tools to, to the apex of what you got. Absolutely. So shifting a little bit, how do you think maybe forehand versus backhand plays into this? Because we've seen, you know, a few examples of outlier tall people being almost predominantly forehands, uh, big germ and Scott Stokely come to mind. Both six, five, six, seven, I believe Scott Stokely is, and just huge levers and being able to whip. So how do you think about the forehand versus the backhand with height? So, so I, I think about the forehand motion for me, and it's definitely not my distance shot. Now, you're just talking about people who can <laughs> throw 500 feet plus with their <laughs> forehand. And I mean, listen, Scott Stokely... God bless him. He is, he's the, the youngest older gentleman I know. His spirit is 12 years old. Uh, he's got the heart of a luchador wrestler and he knows what that means if he's listening. <laughs> so, yeah, the dude's got fighting him and he could pump these forehands, but I think the body, the way I, I connect with my forehand versus my backhand, it just seems like I wind up to a wall with my forehand and it's just a punch through. There's something about the wind up and the unspinning of a backhand for me that makes me feel like for myself this is the supreme distance shot for me so not to limit anyone else there's there's tons of top level players lefties and righties men and women that uh are one one way or another there's players out there not to be so close-minded just backhand and for, uh, forehand that throw thumbers 500 feet i'm yeah. gonna Brian Schwaberger, like the dude has a, a cannon of an overhand shot. So that's, uh, I'm going to go for myself backhand and it's just not limited to what any other players can do. That's what I love about disc golf. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think talking about forehand, I, so sorry, listeners, I do not really throw forehand, but I did recently, AKA the today or a couple days ago, I guess at this point, um, did figure out my forehand. So that's cool. Great development. Maybe we'll talk about that another like, episode. <laughs> like aha moments. Like, oh, I get it. This clicks. Yeah. Yeah. Like wow. aha. Like, oh, oh. So that's how I throw it. And it doesn't roll away. Cool. Very, very, like that's, very cool. you know, like, Effective. oh, I consistently put it in the air. You mean, and not it's, on the ground. Yeah, it's useful. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, we were kind of discussing uh, you know, just earlier, you know, Lou and Dave, we were just discussing forehanding and what that is like and kind of what the parallel is to other sports. And we came up with baseball. Like, I feel like we draw a lot of comparisons and right. Like, are there many short major league baseball pitchers? <laughs> like, I don't know, probably not. And not I many. do think that that like that whip, it does help like with the lag probably to just have a longer limb to have extra pop or extra something like i don't know if there's a way to really test that we got to call bill nye well okay? i was and just like, gonna say this joanna i was gonna guard. say your boy bill get him on the phone because uh <laughs> if anybody is gonna like burn me for this one i'm gonna attempt to do some like ancient history here uh, oh what, boy yeah. buckle <laughs> up yeah people. buckle up people buckle you're about to get up. a history lesson i believe it's the atlatl it's the curved long stick with the arrow attached to it and because oh, it lengthens yeah. your arm it gives you your throwing spears what is effortlessly 300 feet 500 feet uh because of the extension of the arm the length of the arm so in physics theory i would think um the longer the better <laughs> Yeah, ape index. People talk about that a lot. The ratio of your arm length to the actual height. I'm sure yeah. a lot of the top players, if you measured that, they'd have a very high wingspan index. to height. As you're yeah. saying, yeah, yeah, okay. wingspan wow. to yeah. height. Uh, longer wingspan than your height will give you. I want to be really long... tall and really narrow. Hey guys, <laughs> <laughs> that's me. I got you want to be Gumby. Like... <laughs> oh my god, that's what you'd be if you were half your width and height. Okay, we're losing it. <laughs> 
Hey guys, I have a I have a topic and uh, an announcement. If you're ready, this is going to be a shock. Okay. Oh All my right. gosh! Is... Wait, should we be nervous? Yes. <laughs> Drum rolls. No, it's going to be an announcement. Are we going to cry? I hope not. I'm not crying. So, well, I'll just spill beans here. Okay. Uh, so today, I had a final run of bad luck. I think with disc golf. Um, I had to come to a reality with disc golf. So it goes back as far as what I would say is the beginning of the spring and trying to host events, then get into the swing of playing events. Um, I got locked out of my car. I had to cancel because of weather. Um, parks are being a pain in the butt this time of year for no reason. And I didn't play well at a course I should have. So it's all just like falling downhill, but I'm like smiling and plugging away. So really looking forward to the summer being here and big tournaments starting to come into our area. And the reality hit me today, I smashed my thumb on my hand. And I know the type of smash on my thumb and the injury, the slight injury that it is. It's, it's a minor injury, but it's gonna take probably a good month and a half to heal before I would ever wanna think about throwing a disc. Oh, so. It's going to be a big chunk of my summer off, not playing. Everything is finally coming to a halt. I found the bottom of the hill that I felt like I was rolling down. And wow. it's a sigh of relief because it just wasn't going my way this year. Uh, a lot of plans that I wanted to, you know, kind of pursue some goals just start kind of trickling away. And, uh, and then this. So I think. What happened? That, yeah. Just. That's crazy carelessness it's just a, a, a slip of uh where you're putting your hand at the worst moment and you just bang your hand you don't ask for it to happen it's just that's why they call them accidents but mm. no stitches nothing broken just is it swollen as a bruise are you gonna show oh us? yeah nobody wants to see this right <laughs> nobody wants to see it it's oh uh, my god so if you could picture smashing your thumb but not in a flat sense but from a sideways sense to where the thumbnail wants to TP up. Mm. Uh, what? Yeah. So it didn't Ew. feel, it didn't feel good. It's, it's starting to feel a little better, but I'm just leaving it alone. So. Go to the doctor. Did you go to the doctor? Yeah. Yes. No, <laughs> no, I know. Listen, <laughs> you and I are like, yeah. uh, excuse me. No, no, I'm going to make it <laughs> without a doctor visit. Was it at work? Sure. We getting like workers comp or something? <laughs> no, no, no. It was just, just, just after leaving work. So it oh. was definitely on, on my bed and, uh, still trying to process it. Just trying to see what I could have did differently, but that's personal life ruining disc golf life. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, no, but that's a Ew, rough blow, man. No. So, but it's all thumb oh. taped up. That's your <laughs> I was like, oh my God, his arm's so red. I'm like, oh wait, no, that's <laughs> no, sad. no. Yeah, I still got my arm, but <laughs> I feel violent. I feel like my thumb is taped or band-aid to like kind of keep my nail on right now. We'll just say that. But Ow. so now what oh, do I gross. do? What do I do in my free time is like the topic. Like what what do disc golfers tend to find themselves doing when they're injured for like the mainstream part of the disc golf season and dave i couldn't help to think that i could have possibly filmed with you this weekend but i can't push buttons <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know what it's like trying to button a shirt for 10 minutes do you know oh. why this is this is why i was late 15 minutes to our meeting i'm like God, come on, son of a, just, just <laughs> come on like no it just they're right you really need mm. your thumb so yeah, I mean, well, what we were going to do, I was going to say film things like, yeah. can you give lessons without gripping, like uh, without I'm, demonstrating? I did say I'm prepared to go down new avenues and I'm going to pursue all my lessons. I have lessons this weekend and I'm going to, if I have to throw and demonstrate, I feel confident to power down to 50% using mid range or putter and show, you know, and throwing lefty shots while showing them if I, if I have to, but you can caddy for people. <laughs> yeah, I'm listen, I'm busy. Uh, time is limited, so there's less time and gas right. is more money. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'll tell you what, watch Lou, coverage. I have a very good grip that you don't even use your thumb if you want me to show you that. 
Is this the curse of making fun of Dave back to like bite me? I, I think you, oh you, my you goodness. took it you from me. Good like this. Yeah, you took it from me. You're next, Joanna. You're next. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't you put this on me, man. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely not. But no, I'm curious because I definitely can't film right now. I wouldn't want to be responsible for missing that coverage or that, you know, like I right. think I pressed the button, but my thumb tip is numb right now. So, like, I didn't feel it fully. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I have a couple tournaments coming up, so I'll solely just run them. So maybe I could finally host that distance competition like I've always wanted to. So yeah. that would be cool. Yeah, I think there's a lot you yeah. can do. You know, if you are into the film and stuff, obviously coverage is, is difficult. So you have to actively film something. But if you're looking right. to do like any other kind of just like standstill where you can use any of your fingers to press the record button and then walk around the camera. Um, you could do lots of stuff like that. You could learn how to throw lefty. How do you know? Yep. Um, what about doing some commentary? Ooh. Right. There's, there's a lot of different things you could do within disc golf with us or without that. You know, you could definitely stay in the game. I see Here's, my phone number flashing at the bottom right yeah, now. Like a gimmick. 1-800-CALL-LOO. Give us, give hey, us, that's uh, actually, wait, ideas. that's actually seven digits. That's so yeah, funny. there you go. Oh <laughs> my gosh, I wonder whose phone number that is. If... <laughs> Wait, They're can we do that real quick? Calls. But it's Let's, like I don't on, remember what Lou's phone number is. At Let the me... end of this, at the end of this episode, okay, Dave is gonna have to put in the clip. So for all the people that listen and, and watch to the end, Dave is gonna put in the audio clip of what happens when you dial one eight hundred. Call Lou. <laughs> it's probably some number in a different country. Or something. If if you do not see this or hear this at the end of the episode might possibly have been explic uh, explicit and we can't put that out there yeah <laughs> that's not what that's, this that'll go on, on the no. behind the paywall type thing for sure bathroom walls yeah mm. <laughs> right behind the stall joanna what do i it. do what do i do i'm i'm dead in the water i feel what do you do i don't know i just gave you some ideas i mean it, it's tough if ugh. i mean if you don't want to travel too much obviously gas is expensive right now because yeah. I was like, what are ways that you can be like present? And I know you run tournaments, like still attending tournaments in a different way, like volunteering, spotting, like, can you help someone vend? Can you like, that's a great idea. Like, was, I don't see, that know. Was it. That was perfect. Like talk about discs because do you know how many people walk up? I mean, just last weekend at the tournament we were all discussing, like I was in there buying a disc because I had some script for my winnings and at least three different couples who were just walking in the park showed up and were like, so uh, what is this? Oh, what disc golf? What is that? Like, oh, are these free? Oh, no, you buy them. Oh, OK, well, what do they do? But it's like you could easily be the face and like be an ambassador and kind of stand at those moments and educate people. I know it's like not a substitute for playing, but that's like a thing that clearly there's a need for because people are interested and they're like, Oh, I've always wanted to learn. I never had the time. And then you can be like, actually. <laughs> and then, but it's just Got interesting. Like, like other ways to be present at events that don't include playing. Like, yeah. I wish there were more like pro tour stops around here because I wonder if they use like local people at all to help supplement stuff and things. Cause like that could be really fun. Like kind of follow some of their stops and yeah, I, get I'm more not involved there. I'm not, I'm not sure how the PDJ sets it up, but it seems like you can reach out to them. You can always message them. I believe they get back like pretty promptly. I mean, if you were trying to reach out to the PDGA, I'm sorry, so, right? Uh, wrong tour. letters. Wrong letters. Let me restart. <laughs> if you try to get out to the Pro Tour, we'll just call it. Um, uh, if you try to reach the Pro Tour, like while they're trying to set up their year, maybe that's the worst time. But I'm sure, like as things are in the swing of, you know, weekend in, a couple weeks off. Yeah, you, you could probably say, hey, you're coming around and I'm sure there's something set up. I've never tried to actively help the pro tour, but I'm sure it's uh, easy. And, you know, just sending them an email could be doable. But I don't think I can do that. But we do have events like the event that I'm actually going to be a week from now, not able to play. It'd probably be best to just go see how that goes. Maybe we could follow up and see what that experience is like, you know. Yeah. And is I'm there curious. still time to like run more? to like help with a league or start a league or do a thing uh well we have a, plan our, another tournament i i understand yeah our club has a lot of stuff down the pipe it just now turns into not playing but still obviously upholding the the commitment i mean it's just 
a band-aid yeah. on my thumb. I just know I'm not going to throw for a long time. And yeah, but so the tournaments are going to run and the coursework is going to be tough to do, but the course, the courses must go in. And uh, that's exciting because we have a high school and a township course going in probably right. before the summer is over. So yeah, any way to really Dive use your that. creative brain and your ability to connect with people, I think is really going to be your ticket into like staying active. Yeah, I wonder what other people so you know, um, Dave, did you recently go through an injury um, yourself? Um, small things hurt on me all the time. Um, right. what, do you, significant. What, do you, what do you do for recovery? I think yours was not bad timing. It was just still kind of winter, right? Last year I did. And you did too. Yeah, I thought this was... I had a surgery last year and I had to not play for a while. Um, and had to really like slowly get back into it because of... I wasn't able to ever hold my breath. So like, right. so when you throw, if you're, sometimes you're like, ah, like I, I could never do that. Like that was not allowed. Um, so during that time, I watched a lot of coverage <laughs> <laughs> and I, but I caddied a lot and I learned a lot and watched and, but obviously like you and I are in very different stages of our, like this golf development. So at that point I was still, I mean, look, we're students forever of the craft, right? Because yeah, like you yeah, can never well, stop bettering yourself. But I was still like, I felt like a super remedial student and like learning this whole world. So I don't know. I think our approach to off time is a little different, but like rehabbing, I don't know, rehabbing a thumb. I'm really not sure. Or like yeah. a hand. I got a lot of research to do because I'm just going to skip the doctor visit for the day or the weekend and see. I know they're just not going to want to like, hopefully. Um, That's maybe a bad idea why because like what if am i supposed to go if i stub my things... toe like no but you said you smashed your hand like do you think you fractured a bone i think that's the worry is if, if there's something a like bone, you don't want to a... heal wrong right i don't know that they could do it's if... the, the thumb moves the joint moves nothing hurts there's nothing there that could break oh then you're fine dude it's just yeah it's just the, the nail is destroyed. Oh, rip it off, buddy. It'll grow oh. back. Ow. I'm going to send you photos later. I'm just You're going to regret this. No, You're going to regret this. Send them to her. I don't oh, want to like see them. Joanna? Oh, like this? <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Our viewers but like you know that. what i'll watch it i watch dr pimple popper so like oh no worse worse <laughs> I, I i you know i i cringe when i watch discs hit the tree on the trees on the weekend i don't need to see mm. pimples pop deep on the internet okay well all right listeners now you know a little something about me uh, I, yeah. <laughs> a little deep dive into joanna's life <laughs> okay so, that sounds really sad <laughs> thanks dave <laughs> dave what did Jeez. you now, what did you have was it your shoulder <laughs> um oh that's i forgot about that i had a chest injury okay <laughs> come on dave well i just played through it which is why i kind of forgot about it had a chest um, replacement over the weekend just played through <laughs> Broke all my ribs on one side yeah I totally you know sure. um i actually did go get it looked at it was my pectoral minor which is underneath the, uh, the major the, the, the right underneath the major the the larger muscle um <laughs> dr lou over here and strangely enough it's never historian never hurt while i was throwing like it didn't hurt to throw but after like 16 17 holes usually it would just get really sore to the point where like i felt like i was doing more damage mm. so i kind of just try i actually I, that's when i really started getting into a forehand because that didn't hurt it as much i don't know if just not using the muscle using it differently um wow. so that that's what i did mostly i played mostly like forehand rounds um so i don't know if it's your thumb, maybe you could still throw a forehand or you I, know, I joked about playing it. lefty, but you know, just the, not to compete, but just maybe use this opportunity to work on something else. Sure. Even if it's not your game, you could set yeah. stuff up for what you can play again, get into it, like align a bunch of things to get ready for the next three months or something like that. Yep. It'd be nice to pick up a little skill for, even if it was just an out shot, if it was worth it at the right moment to just know how to, Upshot 75 feet lefty accurately and give it a run. I think uh, Nico Castro tried doing that a while ago, right? He was I, like having trouble developing a forehand, so he tried a, a lefty backhand for a while. Yeah. Is that right? I call it the bolthy move. Uh, I've played with plenty of bolthies out there. It just doesn't Ooh. make sense. 
Yeah. Aww. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I here's remember... a here's a, a little question. Sorry, you're about to tell a story. Just real quick. No, that was I'm, it. I'm... <laughs> just played with a bunch of bolties oh. in my time. That's what they're labeled to me. <laughs> Dave's like, anyway, enough, Lou. What Sorry, I want to say. I didn't mean to interrupt. There's a little bit of a I do it all the time. The <laughs> I'm doing it right now. Oh my god. No question. So I've seen quite a few players like this, and my I guess my question I'll ask before I preface it is why does why is this a thing? I've seen quite a few players that play righty backhand and lefty forehand. They have the same vice shot. Versa. They right. have the same shot with opposite hands. It's. Um, I've never you know, seen that. I've seen it, Joanna. Where a player is throwing backhand with their right I hand. I mean, I'm sure it exists. And forehand <laughs> with their left. They're shaking like half the same a dozen times I've you. seen in the last two years or so. You're going to see it forever, uh, Dave. I think that the thing is, is that that type of player, in my opinion – um identifies with their body staying in same. that that right, right. shoulder same. forward the way they see the shot the way they're they might be left side brain people or right side brain people however that works but they're eye. very comfortable and it might be opportunity to shape shots differently a comfort with that or um or even like stretching out for the forehand um to get further away from the, the shot or around a tree you have you know the forehand and the the backhand, and I'll tell you what, and you probably noticed this too. They don't struggle on the course. It works. No, that's right? crazy. It, it's the that's strangest wild. thing. It's, uh, I, I want to know what the term is for the <laughs> less less the oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. No, that's cool. What happens? Um, but I wonder <laughs> if there's oh all right. That's enough. You only get one. Are, are we done here? Are we, what are we doing? A little, a little bit of professionalism, Latina. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You hold the, you oh. hold the space bar mutes, just letting you know. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, yeah. And then she's just holding it. It's just we're just gonna see this, just like this. I'm sorry, this is not for the listeners, just the viewers. We're gonna see this. <laughs> and I was just out there anyway. Thanks, Lou. <laughs> I hope it wasn't too loud. It probably well, was. No, it was. That's it right, was. It was as good as it could be. So anyway, yeah. So I've seen a lot of players like that. So I, I didn't is, want to stay oh, on so, your sneeze for too no, long. No. So so what was <laughs> what I was saying was I wonder what I I have the bothy, but what is the the phrase where someone plays the same shot with both hands, the, sh- the same shaped shot with opposite hands? The double left and right. Know redundant yeah <laughs> the redundant redundant <laughs> the best answer Bruh, that you're I've heard, redundant yeah yeah <laughs> like i mean i uh, asked obviously whether i'm playing with them or if there's like a minute while i'm filming with somebody i ask because it's it's unique and why I, it's I just think, like why right <laughs> it, it seems unnecessary because you're not gaining any advantage at first but yeah, you talk yeah. to them they it's usually not say tactical. why it's just comfort it's right, just I mean, comfort. i guess the best answer that i've heard was it was from a baseball player yep. who was a righty forehand player, forehand player, and lefty just like backhand. a righty pitcher and lefty backhand because that's the way you swing a bat. So exactly mm-hmm. like you were saying, where it's everything from the same Ball, side. Boxing, billiards, billiards, you got it. It just made <laughs> so much sense. It that keeps they're coming back. This way, and then they bat this way, but throw up their left hand. But people tend to approach mm. a sport in this style the same way their whole lives. And then they're just locked in. They can't adjust. For me, I didn't, I never thought about it like being uh, like I'm standing there batting lefty, which would be unnatural to me. And it's, yeah. it still just felt like the most comfortable to me, though. Opposite of what I've done my whole life, but right. naturally it felt right to stand with my right shoulder forward. Yeah. Very I interesting. Agree. I think I, uh, want, I, I wonder. I wonder a question I, I have for our listeners and viewers: um, What is the worst injury you've had that just kind of, you know, put you out of commission for disc golf for a little bit of time? And we'd love to hear about it. And uh, anything that you have to suggest for any of the listeners and viewers, we'll try to bring it up on another topic and let us know how you cope with it. And uh, we look forward to that. Yeah, let us know an injury. No gross pictures. I don't want to see loose thumb. I don't want to see your injury. You're getting it. You're getting no, it. You're I'm all not, getting it. I'm, it's the I'm next blocking, thumbnail. I'm blocking your number. Oh, boo. Boo. <laughs> come on. Come on. Boo. Oh, I tried. I tried. <laughs> I'll give a half credit for it. Uh, but thank you so much, oh, everybody nice. watch, watching and listening. As a reminder, we are giving away this disc. This... Oh, let's see the stamp. Let's see the stamp. No, nope, not it. yet. Nope, no. not yet. We're getting close oh. to 500 subscribers. But everybody who is subscribed right now, we super appreciate it. Tell all your you, friends. All of you watching. Yep. Uh, listening as well. 
Uh, we, of course, appreciate you listening as well as the watchers. And we are going to be back for the next episode. And until then, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.